Our egos are too big to be able to allow us to work together. We need to drop the ego. We need to drop. The point of it is, it's not the message that's, it's not the messenger that's most important. It's the message. It's not the act or the work that's most, that, or the worker that does the most important thing, but it's the work that gets accomplished which is the most important thing. So with the united force, we can more easily see to it that the laws and government, for example, are passed that help defend Hindus rather than take our freedoms away. If we were a united and proactive force, politicians would be scrambling to get our favor. If we are united and proactive, we would get respect from politicians and we could create greater recognition on the importance for them to acquire the Hindu vote, especially in India. We could also have more control over the media that today thinks that being secular means to be anti-Hindu. We would get non-Hindus. We would get non-Hindus or critics of Hinduism to feel that they cannot just say any damn thing against us. Because we won't do anything about it, we need to be a force to be reckoned with. A force that is watching what others are doing for or against us and listening to what they are saying about us. And then be ready to stand up and do something about it when necessary. We must unite under a common set of values, concepts, and traditions that can be the universal uniting factors for all Hindus. This does not mean that we give up our distinctions, or our lineages, or parampras, but that we focus on uniting on the basis of what we can easily agree on, such as the basis of the Bhagavad Gita. Everyone knows Bhagavad Gita, or should know it, and there are all kinds of knowledge within it. But the thing that many people seem to forget is that the Bhagavad Gita is a call to defend Dharma. It is a call to action. That was one of the motivating factors for Arjuna from Lord Krishna, that Arjuna must not run away, as I previously stated, and simply run to the forest, which is what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted. But he must stand up and fight to defend Sanatana Dharma. And we must do the same because as we can plainly see all around us, that without the whole, without Dharma, basically the whole world is falling into hell and confusion. As exhibited by the Mahabharata, as exhibited by the Mahabharata, sometimes when all else fails, you have to stand up and fight to protect Dharma and its spiritual principles. We must also have the attitude that no Hindu is left behind, at least no sincere Hindu. A true Dharmic leader or Vedic ambassador will feel this in the core of his heart. Everyone in the Vedic community must see that all Hindus as Dharmic brothers and sisters as being eligible to make the same spiritual progress as anyone else. Why? No Hindu left behind. That means everyone is eligible to enter the temples, everyone is eligible to participate in the traditions, everyone is eligible to participate in the core identity of being a Dharmist, a Hindu. Everyone should feel that they have a place and are valued and have something to contribute, something to offer. This is the basis of enthusiasm which everyone should feel. This is the power of a united Dharmic community. No Hindu is left behind. When this is established, it creates a most positive atmosphere in all who participate. It creates a very positive future, and it increases a winning team in which many others want to join. Everyone wants to be on a winning team, right? And then feel they can stand up and do their part then we all become very powerful in our ability to change this world and bring in and manifest the spiritual vibration for one and all. Then we all become a part of that uplifting force, which is the ultimate destiny for all humanity, and which is also described in Vedic Shastra, like Bhagavad Gita. But this is also, if I may say so, one of the main principles behind what Kamal Kumar Swami is doing on his 
podiatrists in India. He goes everywhere, whether it is the villages, the streets, the dusty roads, even the houses of the Hindus, anywhere it takes to inspire everyone to remain a part of the Vedic family and then work together to help preserve it. It's gathering the tribes, it's gathering support, it's gathering the forces. I have seen it, I have been with him in Tirupati for this very reason, and I applaud his work. <laughs> this is the ideal of no Hindu left behind. And the Dharmic leader and Vedic ambassadors know how to instill this unity for everyone to take a stand, become involved, and to defend and preserve the culture and all who participate in it. Any apathy amongst Hindus is what must be given up and left behind as we all gather momentum to make sure we all have our freedom to follow the principles, the customs, and the traditions of the Vedic path. So to wrap this up, we have covered a number of points, such as we all need to be Vedic ambassadors. What's a Vedic ambassador? Those that are not afraid to say they're Hindu, and they're not afraid to share their culture with others. Secondly, we must be educated in the profound nature of our culture. Practicing Vedic tradition is a right and freedom which must be protected. Another point is, apathy is an enemy. And everyone and can must do something. Another one is that Bhagavad Gita is a call to action. And of course, as I just mentioned, no sincere Hindu left behind. We, make, we have to make sure that no one feels they're simply left out, ignored. And we must become united and work in concerted efforts and become a formidable force for Vedic Dharma. So briefly, how do we do this? We must become united under common principles, such as the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, united for stopping cow slaughter, united to stop the deceitful conversion practices that try to take people away from Vedic culture, and united for such things as saving the sacred Jamuna River. We should be united to stop the corruption, especially in Indian politics, as we'll hear about shortly. India, the homeland of a dynamic and thriving Vedic tradition. We should be united for preserving all aspects of the Vedic spiritual knowledge and for passing it to the next generations. You have no idea how important that is. Well, some of you do. I won't make past judgment on everybody, but it's mostly those people that are not here, that are out there, that should be here. So anyway, we should be united for the protection and promotion of the glorious character of Vedic culture that everyone can appreciate. Who among us cannot join and be united for these points? And the more people who participate and work together, the easier it is for all of us. Don't forget that. And the more we work in such concerted efforts, the more we establish a unified, global Vedic community. Now it is said that the war of Kurukshetra, the war to uphold Dharma, which is what it was, anybody who criticizes, oh, Krishna taught Arjuna to fight, is an idiot. He taught that to uphold Dharma so that others can take advantage of it. Anyway, this war lasted for 18 days, which changed the world. If all Hindus, Dharmas, Gurus, Sadhus, Bhaktas, etc., etc., all over the world ever really and truly united and work together as a single force, we could change the world in 18 days. Now isn't that a goal worth working for? Isn't that a goal worth fighting for? That, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Dharma, is one of the primary purposes of my life. This is all I'm living for, and this is my vision. But we have to share the vision. And I will work with anyone who shares that vision. In this way, we can stand united, and in this way, we stay united. So if you help me and I help you, if you wish me well, and I give you my best wishes, 
and we all work together like that, it creates an atmosphere of strength and positivity. It makes our future very bright and full of potential. And if everyone does a little something to help, fantastic things can happen. Many people will become attracted and want to join and be a part of it. So let us all work together, encouraging each other and become more united as Hindus, followers of Sanatana Dharma, and show the world the great contributions that the culture of Vedic Dharma has given and continues to give to all of humanity. If we take care of Dharma, Dharma will take care of us. But just one thing, we have to take the first step. Together as United Hindus, we can do this. That is the potency and power if we stay together, stand together, and work together as a united global Vedic community. Thank you very much. We would like to thank Stephen Knapp for a wonderful speech on Hinduism. It makes me be proud to be a Hindu, doesn't it? Dr. Subramaniam Swami to speak, right? He's actually sitting right up front and he will be our grand finale, so you all have to wait patiently.